This is Tim Petrie, NDSU Extension Livestock Marketing Economist. Three and my colleagues and I have put together a four-part backgrounding series for you. Dr. Carl Hoppe will talk about backgrounding rations and feed costs. Dr. Brian Parman will discuss backgrounding budgets and break-even prices. And Dr. Jerry Stucka is going to discuss some health concerns for backgrounding cattle with you. I am going to discuss the cattle price situation and outlook for backgrounding cattle. Just a point of reference here, you see that I did this on November 25th and uh, so if you are watching this later, prices for both corn and feeder cattle, but both cash and futures prices do change and so uh, please keep that in mind. This is the time of the year, of course, when producers are deciding whether to sell their calves or backgrounding calves. From strictly a price situation, there is potential for adding value to calves through backgrounding, but of course it all depends on what feeds you have availability and those feed costs, and also calf prices where that you could sell your calves at and projected uh, prices for heavier backgrounded cattle. So first of all, I'm going to go through some of the current price fundamentals that are affecting the market. Both corn and fed cattle prices are important factors, both for calf prices at the current time and for what the backgrounded uh, seven to nine weight cattle will be whenever you sell them, January, February, or March. So those are the two important factors. Corn prices have been volatile and likely will continue to be volatile with all the uncertainty in what harvest and final uh, supplies will be, yields and so on. And then on top of that, of course, all the trade issues going on. So we have kind of a volatile market up there. More on that in a minute. There is a narrower than normal 550 to 800 pound price spread for steers and heifers. A number of reasons for that that I'll just touch on now and get into more as we go through the slides. Um, first of all, in the southeastern U.S., uh, drought the last several months has caused forced calf sales. Normally when it cools off down there and rains, uh, they can keep calves longer and before they enter the feedlot. Or, but in, in this year, they were forced to sell calves because it was so dry, even liquidated some cows for that matter has caused high cow slaughter. So anyway, coupled with that, there's dryness in the winter wheat grazing area, at least in, in parts of it, particularly Western Oklahoma. So that's also reduced the demand for uh, calves, both from over in the, where they're being forced sold over in the southeast as well as our calves that might be going down there so we got actually more calves on the market and kind of reduced demand there's why reason why calf prices are lower relative to the heavier ones uh, moving up here then in the corn belt of course it's very wet harvest still going on and lots of corn uh, left to harvest and then add that with snowfall around the northern plains which has caused uh, late weaning and a lot of other issues and has caused lower quality feeds, which actually could be a plus for backgrounding because we have a number of them. Carl Hoppy is going to talk to you about uh, the possible wet corn and, and uh, low test weight corn, maybe some corn even that uh, didn't make black layers, or that made silage and whatever, low quality wheat, barley on harvest. Uh, lots of lots of those available because of the weather and Carl will discuss some of those options with you that may provide opportunities for backgrounding. Uh, the farmer feeders are busy with harvest. Uh, farmer feeders I'm you know identifying as those along southern South Dakota and Minnesota and into Iowa not the bigger commercial lots that would be in in uh, Nebraska, central and western Nebraska and Colorado and and Texas and so very little buying interest from those farmer feeders because they're still combining corn and also have wet lot and so lower buying interest there also puts pressure on calf prices because we're in there those farmer feeders in the seats at auction markets there liking uh, nice high quality calves we have up here and helps to provide demand. Furthermore the April live cattle futures today were right at 125 and so that's created a good demand for over 700 pound uh, feeder cattle. On the other hand, by June, it drops off 
uh, nine dollars there to 116 and another two dollars in to the August future so that negatively impacts affects calf prices because the over 700 pound cattle can still make that April May market where have a higher hedging potential for the feedlots but by the time we get past the April May and uh, you know when the calf of calves put on full feed would were, would be more into the June live cattle futures in August at lower levels so that would negatively affect calf price as well then of course all this time of the year with the heavy runs and all the weather related issues even from spring into yeah, with uh, calving difficulties and so on or big discounts for unweaned calves or short ears or tails that have might have had some wet spring weather issues or muddy calves from the lots and so on so keeping those calves in a backgrounding situation probably add value to them just when there aren't as many to sell and and uh, you know and can kind of straighten them up so Going first of all to corn, which is again a good half the equation there on what calves are worth now and what backgrounded calves will be worth in the spring. As I said, we've had a very volatile corn market this year. The blue line is, is this is corn prices in Omaha. Why I use Omaha is because that's where the feedlots are that will buy our backgrounded cattle when they are ready this spring. will be moving down to you know the Nebraska like I said Colorado uh, that area down there and uh, so uh, using that as a proxy for corn so you know we had a uh, corn near where it is now for the beginning of the year but then ran it up to 450 by July with all the problems we had with planting and the thoughts of a smaller crop but then of course they plummeted back down to near current levels we had another spike in prices there up into mid-October with uh, some maybe potential for some trade issues in a smaller crop and so on but now I've fallen back off interestingly enough to just about exactly there at 350 where they were last year at this time and the average so the big question mark there on the right hand side is what are corn prices going to do they're likely to be volatile you know trade issues are a big thing and then what's the ending uh, of stocks going to be and so a lot of volatility could be ahead of us and something to watch for uh, cattle prices looking at uh, slaughter steers the other half of the equation on of what feeder cattle are worth the red line is uh, this past year and the green line that's kind of right on top of it is last year's prices so very interesting except for a couple deviations uh, this year's fed cattle prices have been very near last year uh, last week for example they were exactly the same at, at 116 you see the red and green line there together in in November and uh, looking ahead then uh, last year prices uh, inched up now till the end of the year and that's the expectations that red dot is the December 2019 live cattle futures and up there right at 120 which would be right where cash uh, fed cattle were last year so some increasing prices there will help to at least support feeder cattle prices and go back into the next year of 2020 uh, we go to the blue squares futures and uh, again last year they inched up and that's the expected uh, expectation for this year as February and then like I mentioned the April futures before up there at 125 so we're at 116 now up to 125 be a further increase in price which again uh, if that uh, comes to fruition is supportive for for um, feeder cattle prices and again a lot of things can happen uh, you know domestic demand is strong and export demand is strong and we've got some trade issues though to straighten out so these are we're just looking at the uh, at the futures market here go to the 550 to 6 weight uh, calves here in uh, uh, North Dakota and this is at the four markets reported by the USDA it starts off at West Fargo and then uh, Napoleon Mandan and Stockman so we have the four markets uh, worth of prices here the green line 
is uh, this year's prices and we compare that then to the blue line which is uh, was last year's prices and for the first half of the year again we were pretty well lockstep there but recently have fallen below last year for all the reasons I talked about uh, before you know in October there corn prices spiked but uh, up and so then feeder cattle fell down there to 149 but then as corn prices fell back down to uh, last year's levels then they picked up some but we're still on a price situation below last year because of uh, again, those forced movements out of the southeast and drought in the corn belt and all the no, no farmer feeders and all those other issues. So why we're looking at this chart is because this is the starting value for calves for a backgrounding program. Either this is a price you could get for selling them or the price you could get for buying them. The average last week was right there at 153 or they've been averaging there between 150 and 155. Um, but again, there's a wide range in price. So we'll get to a market report in a minute and show you that. But this is our starting point then for kind of valuing what calves are worth going into the backgrounding program. Move to the heavier weight uh, 800 pound cattle then and of course what we're mostly interested in here is what are those prices going to be when these uh, backgrounded cattle get to 750, 800 pounds or whatever maybe even up to 900 there in January, February or March. Right now the green line is this year's prices compared to the uh, blue line from last year and again we're just a little bit below not as far below as calves uh, where we were uh, last year and uh, so let's move ahead then to that January through March time period and uh, we see the blue squares then our 2020 futures again and so we see the January feeder cattle futures trading right today at 142 in January and all the way into March and then up to 143-44 by April but again through that January March time period about 142 they were averaged 143 and change last week so again uh, pretty much the same as they are now is what the futures market is saying but the big unknown of course is what our corn price is going to do and then we have to watch fed cattle as well to make sure that you know these prices here are based on some improvement in the uh, in uh, fed cattle prices and so all that has to come to fruition but right now it looks like you know in the low 140s is what the market is saying prices will be this spring. Here's the market report for last year for those four markets and again it's for all the different weight classes just in the interest of time today I'm going to kind of focus on those 550 to 6 weight calves highlighted in the middle and then also go down and look at the backgrounding calves but starting off with the 550 to 6 weight calves again you see that 153 average last week but the wide wide range in prices there from 143.50 up to 160.175 and even some fancy ones up to 165.50 so uh, you know that's a eight, just on the regular range there's an 1825 per hundred weight range from the highs to the lows and so uh, you know it's important for you to know when you're pricing calves into a backgrounding program are you at the top of the range or at the bottom of the range and I'll talk more about this in a minute but you know under average prices maybe that's an opportunity to background and add some value to them if they're maybe unwean now or have some other things uh, issues that uh, I, I discussed before <laughs> then uh, go down to the heavier weights then the 800 pounders again like we said average last week at 143.50 and 134 to 145 range there notice it all the way down from 700 pounds all the way up to 950 pounds very little difference in prices because these are prices for cattle that can make that uh, kill by April and and May and so on so selling very close and and uh, very well there switch to the heifers then and um, we always do background a lot of heifers in North Dakota and I think that'll be the case this year again heifers are always uh, discounted quite a bit in the fall of the year with the heavier runs 
And so simply looking up there at those 450 to 500 pounders, we see about a $25 discount to their steer counterparts. But by the time we get down to the um, 750 to 850s, uh, we see about a $13 decline. So every 50 pounds you put on heifers, they're going to gain in price to steers, which just is another, although they may be a little bit more inefficient, this is another reason why you might want to background heifers because they're gaining in price to steers as we go along to ultimately at the slaughter level, uh, heifers and steers are the same price. Another consideration probably on heifers and the others are going to maybe talk about this is that you know particularly on the lighter weight end of of those heifers uh, down there maybe instead of uh, pushing them along hard in a background program you want to back off and more winter them uh, on, on a less heavy ration and so they keep them thin and then by the spring of the year they could go on grass and they're always in the spring of the year by May a really good demand for grass cattle and so far with all the moisture we had it looks like uh, be some good grass conditions uh, next year so just a thought. Okay uh, here then we want to you know kind of get more into the nitty-gritty uh, so we'll look at some projected backgrounding profits and reasons to background in the middle right above the table there under the heading you see a website there and I have a, a backgrounding budget on my website and I use this as the basis for this chart and uh, I just simply use three dollar and nine cent corn and ninety dollars hay given that there's a big range in corn prices across North Dakota from the ethanol plants to the elevators and so on but I just use that you have to use your own feed cost obviously in your budget to come up with a similar profit situation to me and Brian is going to talk with you more about that so anyway the North Dakota weekly last week said that 550 steers were bringing 143.50 to 161.75 average of 153 so to start off we need a 550 steer purchase price and so uh, circle there on top well I have a range you see of 140 to 165 of possibilities in five dollar increments to give us an idea of profit potential then I selected 155 as a close price to last week's average is an in uh, weight for calves uh, or an in, in weight price for calves and uh, then on the left hand side I just selected 140 as a potential price for the backgrounded cattle coming out at 750 800 pounds whatever they might be again uh, summarized below with the January and March feeder cattle futures are about 142 and and uh, so uh, coming across from 140 and down from 155 shows about a $50 bill for backgrounding but again the uh, lower price that they might bring either or you have to buy them at the more profit potential or the higher price you get up to those uh, high quality calves that sold at 165 you see you're going to have to have a pretty good price coming out there in the bottom to make any money so you know the, again uh, a lot of opportunity I think to add value to those lower priced cattle at the present time. So uh, Look at the seasonal price index for those heavyweight backgrounding cattle. The green arrow on the right there, we start in November, and there is a seasonal tendency for a decline into February. This is an index, so you come across with one. Anything above one is above average prices for the year, which typically happen then in July and August, and then by end of December below average and, and into February. So that doesn't say this year that has to happen, and I've already talked about that. You know, we're looking maybe at in that 140 area is a potential there, but keep in mind the, the tendency here is, and, and so possibly some kind of floor pricing or price risk management, Here's uh, some price risk management tools that we do have available to us. Uh, we, we have cash forward contracts possibly where you would contract directly with a feedlot or uh, uh, video and internet auctions might be available to you. We do have a CME feeder cattle futures market and a corresponding options market. To, options where you could set a floor price again you need to go through a broker there 
Um, USDA has a livestock risk protection insurance program that's available. Maybe one of these might fit your, uh, or a combination might fit your marketing plan. So a little bit more details. Here's the March feeder cattle futures. And uh, in black, the high low and close for the, since uh, April, what they've done. And then the green line is the CME cash index. Those two will come together there by, by March, just to show you what the cash market and futures market has been doing. But anyway, a lot of volatility. We had high futures prices back in May when there was a anticipation of a huge corn crop with the more planting and so on. Then an abrupt fall off as we had planting problems and then uh, uh, you know low prices there end August September with the Tyson plant closing and some other issues but they've responded really nice in September back up to the May prices and we see here then uh, today closing right in that 142 so again you would need to go through a broker if you want to use the futures market and or options market to set a floor price and you have to understand futures and options, I realize that, but something you may want to consider. Another one I mentioned was the uh, USDA uh, Livestock Risk Protection Insurance. Just a note of uh, just some change here, if you've used them before, is the new farm bill did increase the subsidy rates for LRP. Again, there are a bunch of different or several different coverage levels that you can select at different premium levels but as you uh, go down in the coverage level there is a new set of subsidy rates unlike the old rate was a 13 percent subsidy across the board now we have some uh, different rates there. Uh, so here for today again uh, November 25th where it was the offering these are just uh, for the the closest contract we can get is a 13-week contract, which would end February 24th. Uh, and uh, uh, again, a number of prices and costs available to you, but I just picked the highest price available uh, today was 139.80. It would cost you 325 a hundred weight. What you're betting against is the current LRP cash price is 145. So. Uh, the current price would have to fall below uh, 139.80 for any payment there, but uh, again, you're just kind of setting a floor price, and you could get 140 for a March 23rd, or almost 142 for an April 20th, whatever marketing date you might select, and heifers a similar thing on the bottom. So again, uh, LRP is sold through crop insurance agents. I think most of you grow crops, and so you would just go to your crop insurance agent if you're interested. Says, I don't have time today to visit with you about uh, all the ins and outs of LRP, and so you just, just uh, kind of showing you here the end. Always we kind of wonder then, for both LRP and futures and options, how does that futures price or the CME cash settlement price that they're all based on, how does that compare to our cattle here? And my rule of thumb is for those east to west along I-94 markets for 800 pound steers were about on par. In other words, on the average, we're right about an equal price to the futures options LRP. However, keep in mind that we do have a wide range in prices. And so you need to know whether you're at the top of the range or at the bottom of the range could affect your your basis as well. And then of course, if you're uh, north along Highway 2 markets and so on, you've got to take a two to four dollars off, I suppose, because of the transportation, the normal flow is, is south. So that's kind of a, a quick run through of uh, some things affecting the market and so on. Uh, again, caution you that there is a lot of chance for volatility and some price risk out there. And so you may want to look at some kind of of a price risk management or floor pricing, but I do want to emphasize with the feeds we have and so on that there certainly are opportunities to background if you wish to do that. So I urge you to, uh, you know, look at your own costs and listen to the other uh, programs provided by the other three uh, extension specialists and, and make your decision.